Well, good morning, and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel once again with Mr. G, and it is Thursday, October 15th, the feast day of St. Teresa of Avila, pretty popular saint, uh, and she is one of the patron saints of Spain. Um, I say one of them because that distinction goes mostly to St. James the Apostle. Um, but yeah. I'm going to read the page from St. Saint Ther Saint Teresa of Avila today out of the St. Book. Anyway, today's gospel is from Luke chapter 11, verses 47 through 54. Let's begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Woe to you! You build the memorials of the prophets whom your ancestors killed. Consequently, you bear witness and give consent to the deeds of your ancestors, for they killed them and you do the building. Therefore, the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and apostles. Some of them they will kill and persecute in order that this generation might be charged with the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who died between the altar and the temple building. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be charged with their blood. Woe to you, scholars of the law. You have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourselves did not enter, and you stopped those trying to enter. When he left, the scribes and Pharisees began to act with hostility toward him and to interrogate him about many things, for they were plotting to catch him at something he might say. Oh, okay, so um, we are finally finished with the denunciation of the Pharisees and the scholars of the law, in which this is a very intense scene. Like, if you read this yourself, there are a lot of exclamation points whenever Jesus is talking. Um, so he's putting emphasis and, you know, almost seems like angst against uh, these, these Pharisees and the scholars of the law. Like he's angry and he's teaching them with authority. And um, uh, he even mentions, uh, you know, he forewarns all the prophets and the apostles that they'll be killed, that they are charged with a generation of blood. You know, these are pretty harsh words. Uh, saying pretty much saying the blood is on your hands because you don't know the true teachings of Christ um, in, in trying in, in doing God's will. Uh, so this is an intense teaching moment uh, from Jesus to the Pharisees and the scholars. And he goes back from the blood of Abel to the blood, blood of Zechariah. Uh, Abel, of course, is the first murder in Scripture uh, with Cain and Abel. Uh, so... He just pretty, he says all these murders are on your hands, uh, and, and Jesus is trying to get them to convert uh, and just understand. Sometimes you need to do that with people. Um, you need to speak with authority, otherwise it doesn't click. It doesn't it doesn't register. Um, so our tone um, and Jesus's tone here, I believe, is is really uh, speaking about the importance of of truth, uh, which we know in our world we need more of truth because um, people are. You know, unfortunately, don't have a lot of truth and wisdom. Um, anyway, so with all that being said, um, as Jesus continues to roast the Pharisees and put them on blast in their own house, we are going to talk about how St. Teresa of Avila treated Jesus as a friend. Uh, because even though, you know, I'm sure you guys all have friends, get angry at each other, um, but then you're still friends. That's what makes friends friends. If you get butt hurt all the time and too easily, that's not really a friend. Um, friends help each other, hold each other accountable, um, and help each other grow to become the best version of ourselves. So that's what Jesus is doing in the in the scripture today, and this is what I'm going to read about in this book. And then we'll, we'll wrap it up because I know I'm going a little longer than I should. So St. Teresa of Avila, from 1515 to 1582. One day, St. Teresa of Avila and some of her sisters were attempting to cross a storm-swollen stream in a small cart. Their donkey balked, and St. Teresa ended up drenched to the skin and covered with mud. Looking to heaven, she said, God, if this is the way you treat your friends, no wonder you have so few of them. For St. Teresa, God wasn't a remote, distant entity, but an everyday friend. She felt comfortable talking with God about every aspect of her life, including stubborn donkeys. This doesn't mean she wasn't reverent or respectful. St. Teresa is also the author of two of the greatest mystical treatises of all times, The Interior Castle and The Way of Perfection. 
In addition, she was one of only two women to be named Doctors of the Church for their profound insight and wisdom. Catherine of Siena is the other. What St. Teresa knew and what we all must try to learn is that God can't be removed from the everyday occurrences of our lives. God is not like good china to be brought out for special occasions and then carefully packed away the rest of the time. When we save our china, china for special occasions, pretty soon we never use it because no occasion is quite special enough. The same is true of God. If we only talk to God on formal occasions, soon we won't talk with God at all. Instead, we need to bring God into all aspects of our lives, like stoneware used on the table for every meal. Do I keep God and religion in their Sunday places? And the challenge is, I believe God is with me at all times and in all places. It's a challenge, that's for sure. But challenge that we must try to overcome every single day. Have a great day. God bless. Keep it real. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.